Hi guys! I was tagged by Bumblebee to answer to this new Orchid tag. And uh, thank you Bumblebee! And here are my answers. Questions 1 and 2. What is your funniest, most devastating or most embarrassing Orchid experience? Well, my most devastating experience was uh, when I lost my first Cattleya. <laughs> I had got it as, an, as a gift from our Orchid Society for helping with the show. And uh, I didn't have much experience with Cattleyas. And that plant, all the newest roots had been cut off because they were growing outside of the pot. And the nursery, uh, a nursery from Taiwan, had this uh, habit of cutting away any roots that were growing out of the pot. Maybe they thought it looked nicer, but they were the newest and most important roots to the plant. I didn't know about that. And um, it was planted in pure sphagnum moss and it was very old and compact. And someone in our forum said that he was going to repot his plant because uh, he, d he was afraid of overwatering it during the winter. So I decided to do the same and I repotted it immediately into bark. So I made two mistakes. The first one was that uh, it was pl planted in sphagnum, so it should be planted in something similar, not such a drastic change. And the other problem is that I didn't know the old roots, they would die, and it had no new roots, and because it was winter it would not make any new ones, only when it had a new growth. So I repotted it, and the plant started to get really bad, and bad, and bad, and then it started to get desiccated, and it got some rot, and I had to cut the rhizome, and um, it didn't help. The rot just spread. So when the newest growth <laughs> got rotten, I lost the plant. It was very sad, but there was nothing I could do anymore. Well, and uh, other plants I got, not all, but some other plants I had bought at the show, they got sick because one of them had a, a, a disease and it contaminated the others that were in close contact. So in the in the spring they all got sick and, and I don't even know if it was a virus or what it was but the leaves got really full of ugly markings and it was spreading fast. Not black rot but something else. So it was sad but at least I got some nice plants too. So the third question is what are your orchid pet peeves? Well, I have to say, diseases um, that the orchids can get, and like viruses or fungal diseases, or, or pests like spider mites, I just uh, hate them so much. So these are the worst things, and I, I really hate them. Well, and then uh, number four, what was your favorite orchid gift? Well, I have to say, the Alicia Retta Hit and Dancer I got from Rachel. It's such a beautiful plant and it makes so wonderful flowers. I, I love the pink with the yellow on the lip. It's so beautiful. I like it so much. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> and another gift I enjoy very much. It's my Paphiopedilum primulino I got from Joachim Karge. And I like this very much. And this plant kind of changed the way I look at Paphiopedilums because I was getting tired of them. <laughs> I only had a Paphiopedium maldii that is such a slow grower. It grows so slowly that it's really boring and I always keep waiting for it to bloom but it just makes new leaves and it grows so slowly. But this one, the Primulinum, uh, which is one of the parents of Paphiopedium pinocchium, which is a very popular cross, well, it grows uh, all the time and it it's a serial bloomer, so it keeps uh, making one bloom after the other. And it's such a cute thing, I like it very much. Then, the next question, what was your most enlightening orchid discovery? Well, this was hard to, to answer, I, I don't really know. Maybe it was um, that uh, cattleyas are not difficult to grow. 
It was many, many years ago, before I was interested in orchids, I had been in an orchid exhibition and I saw those huge cattleyas and they were so beautiful. I admired them very much, but it never crossed my mind to try to grow them. I never imagined that one day I would have them. And um, it's, it was an enlightening experience to, to realize that, uh, that I know how to grow them well, that I know all the technique, all the requirements, and I can do it. It's something that makes me very happy. Well, the next question. What are your best orchid practices? Uh, I have to say one of my best practices is researching before buying. I always want to know everything about a plant before deciding if I'm going to buy it or not. And I only buy plants that will do well in my environment. I know what I can provide them and I know what what kind of plants I should get. And, and I don't want to buy something that will not grow well at my environment. And I, it's something that I would advise to everyone to know what you can provide and then when you want a plant, see before you get it if it's something that will do well at your home. I live in Finland and the winter is really long and dark, so during the winter I need to give them extra light, so I have uh, lights. Uh, artificial lights and I have uh, humidity trays uh, with heating mats below them and everything so I can provide uh, longer uh, light hours during the day and uh, humidity and, and warmth and also the drop of temperature during the night which is so important to get them to bloom and sometimes one reason why why some people don't get their cattleyas or phalaenopsis to bloom again is because they give it to a constant um, temperatures and light throughout the year and uh, they really need to feel the change of seasons and to feel the change of night and day this this drop of temperature is very important but still speaking about my my best orchid practices uh, giving them um, MSU fertilizer like rain mix is another important practice uh, every work that has to have a nutrition and um, in my experience this is the best fertilizer that has I have used for some years and my orchids really enjoy it and they grow and they bloom very well. And uh, another good practice is getting orchids that bloom at different seasons because this way I always have something in bloom. And uh, still one thing that I want to, uh, to say is that one good practice is keeping an Excel file with all possible information about each one of the plants I have. I have um, information on the name of the plants and their parents, the time when I bought them, and how much they costed, what kind of pot they were planted on, and uh, when do they bloom, when it last bloomed, and we, how many flowers it made, and how long the flowers lasted the size of the blooms, the number of spikes, and the, if the, the flowers are fragrant, and um, if it needs a winter rest, uh, or what kind of temperature requirements, and when it was less reported, and what kind of media, and what was the nursery I got it from, and if the plant died, I also write down what was the cause of death. <laughs> Because all these things help me, and especially to know when it was reported to. And um, I like to know when it bloomed, so I, I know when to expect new blooms. And uh, all these things are very interesting, and um, I don't have a big co uh, collection, and I kind of remember all this <laughs> without having to write down. But I like to have it down in, in an Excel file. And sometimes I have forgotten to put this information there and then I'm so mad at myself and I realized that, oh damn, I forgot to, to include something important there. Now I don't remember when it bloomed. <laughs> and then the next question. What are your favorite places to buy orchids? Well, we don't have nurseries in Finland and uh, so I prefer to buy from Germany and I have uh, always enjoyed uh, ordering from there. And uh, my favorite nurseries have been Kurling Orchiden, Orchidengarden Karge, and uh, now Schwerter too. 
I have also ordered from Wichmann sometimes, but it's more expensive. Also, our Orchid Society organizes a bazaar every spring, and it's a day when we can exchange orchids, we can uh, sell divisions and sell plants and also buy from other members. And it's very nice and I have often sold plants there and sometimes I have bought some things. But because I don't have much space in my collection, uh, I usually have something in mind. I want exactly one certain orchid and uh, probably I will not find there. It's very difficult to find exactly what you want. So I end up mostly ordering from Germany. Then on the next question, what is your least favorite place to buy orchids? Well, I have to say some local flower shops because they, they don't treat orchids well. Sometimes they think that, well, they are tropical plants and then they water them so much. Like uh, Phenolopsis I got that had been so severely overwatered that it died very soon after I got it. Uh, well, and other other places like this, some garden garden centers too, they are not so nice to buy because sometimes uh, they have mealybugs and uh, it's difficult to find interesting plants there. And number nine, what is the worst orchid advice we have ever been given? Well, I have to say the worst advice I have ever been given was uh, that the orchids don't need fertilizer, that you don't need to give them anything because in nature they are not fertilizer by anyone. But this is so wrong. In nature they grow on trees, in a canopy of trees, and uh, in, there behind, in between their roots and everything, there is so much so much stuff. There are there are bird and bat and frog droppings, dead insects, decomposing leaves and plant material, just to name a few things. You know, trees are full of life and, and there are lots of leftovers left by animals and insects and other, other plants too. It is an unsterile environment. Uh, orchids, they need nitrogen and other minerals and they don't get that from, from bark and much less from semi-hydroponics and even less in water culture. Actually, in water culture, they will only get water if you don't give any fertilizer. But uh, orchids, they are living, living beings like you and me and we cannot really survive on only water. Orchids bloom even if they are not treated well because they have a need to pass on their genes while they still can. So it might be misleading to think that a plant is doing well because it's blooming, but it's not always the case. Um, so at some point they might deplete themselves and they might die. Well, just uh, you have to remember that they are living creatures and all of us living creatures, we need nourishment. And fertilizer isn't the most important thing, but it is a very important thing too. But besides fertilizer, they need light and ventilation and water, humidity, right, right temperatures and a drop of temperature at night and change of seasons. All of these things are important. And then the next question, number 10, what's the best orchid advice you can give? Well, I, I have to say that you should read a lot. Just don't rely on only what you hear from us uh, in YouTube or, or on Facebook or what other people say. You really should read about it. The, most, the more you read, the more you learn. And there are so many good orchid books and uh, magazines and everything. So just uh, read, get interesting books and uh, participate in orchid forums and um, check the orchid board there and, um, and uh, read. There are so many interesting uh, conversations there. And if you can, if you have an orchid society in your area, just uh, you should really join because uh, most of them have so many interesting activities, especially in the USA. You have so, so many interesting societies with so many lectures and fun stuff. So you have fun, you learn, and you get to learn from um, other members that have more experience than you. And when you are given good advice, uh, please take notes. Don't uh, keep asking people the same questions again and again. <laughs> 
just make some culture cards for your orchids. Just make notes and such that if you need, you, you can go back to it and and, and, ch and check from there. I, I have this habit that when I'm, I'm searching and uh, learning about a new orchid, then I want to buy it and I just copy everything that I find that is more interesting and more enlightening and then I just copy into a, a text file and I save it for later so I can get back and read it if I need more information, if I have forgotten something. Yeah. So this is a good thing that I would advise. And um, there are many ways to grow orchids because there are many different environments. So something that works well for some person might not necessarily work for you. And uh, what works for you might not work for other people. So don't be too quick to judge. Just uh, be open-minded. Just remember that there are different environments and someone might live in a place with so much humidity that it doesn't, the plants don't need too much watering and some kinds of media will work for, for them more, but not for you. So uh, there are so many differences, so you have to keep these things in mind. But well, this is really all I had to say. I hope you enjoyed listening to my answers to the orchid tag and I want to thank Bumblebee again. And I have to, to um, nominate people to answer to the tag and I would like to, um, I would like to tag Anna from Crooked Orchids <laughs> if you haven't been tagged yet and Roger if you haven't been tagged. And I'm sorry if you haven't been tagged, but I forgot. <laughs> but uh, I hope you enjoy it. And if you like, just answer the tags. And if you were not tagged, but um, you would like to share your experiences, just leave a comment and uh, give it a thumbs up if you like it. <laughs> Have a very nice day. Bye-bye.